Hey guys, welcome to episode three of the Hatch Podcast, presented by Nest. I'm Glysel, your host, and I'm here today with Aman, my co-host. What's up, everybody? Um, everybody. Today we are welcoming a very special guest,、um, and he's our very first one on the show. Actually, I have prepared a small intro for our guest because he is so special, and it's our first time doing this. <laughs>、um, our guest we are joined by today is a person who was. Who grew up in Singapore and actually went to the same high school that I went to.、Um, he started his professional career as a journalist before transitioning into the film industry, where he actually ended up being nominated for an award at the Champs Elysees Film Festival, I believe. And most recently, has transitioned to the NFT space, particularly focusing on music NFTs and helping create a music. NFT nightlife platform that's hoping to change a lot of sort of the ticketing space.、Um, please give a warm welcome to Daniel Grove, the co-founder of the Lost Club Toys. Thank you so much! Wow, your, your, your internet research is not bad. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I looked at your IMDb. I went through everything. And that's what I found.、Yeah. <laughs> um, and Daniel, I'm going to start off with the first question. This was actually what Nabi, our head of marketing, was. Uh, alluding to earlier, which is the images of the NFTs. Are they? This is a two-part question. Are they a bear or are they a koala? And then the second part of the question is, what is the Lost Club toy, and where did this sort of name come from, and what is this about?、Um, they are. A, <laughs> I like. I like where you're starting. They are. A, they are a bear. They are a koala. It's sort of a raw shorts test because different people have different. Animals that they associate it with. I mean, we 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 wanted them to be、um, not a singular animal, but you know, something kind of between between species, because <laughs> we're all about species interrelations.、Um, uh, but I like to say that they, you know, they are between a bear and a koala. I mean, they're kind of like a bear with those cool big koala ears,、um, and you know, and koalas are a, a, a version of bear. So let's just say a species of bear. Um, so it all started with the toys themselves.、Um, <clears throat> you know, our co-founder and friend. We 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 were we were sort of swapping ideas w- when we started understanding that you know the the, the, the three co-found the, the three people who became the co-founders、um, were friends working on different projects for Google Arts and and Google Google Arts and Culture before, and and we both realized we had all been getting into the NFT space. Individually, and so we sort of formed our own little alpha group about projects, you know, Discord groups, what 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 stuff to look out for, how not to get scammed,、um, and then of course, as creators ourselves,、um, one one of our founders being in music, the other being in design, myself coming from film and TV, we all started iterating on, well, what would we do if we were to create something in the space?、Um, And then you know the the toys popped up in our WhatsApp feed, and we and we absolutely loved them.、Um, they were they were kind of like imagine the Sesame Street characters, the Muppets from Sesame Street. If they were if they were priced out of Lower Manhattan, <laughs> which is not unheard of,、um, and, you know, because of gentrification, and they were sent across the world to party everywhere where they could, from Burning Man to Berlin to. Tokyo to to Zook Singapore,、um, you know, each finding their tribe, each each getting lost and then finding their tribe and 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 having their different aesthetics and attributes and traits according to that,、um, and that's kind of where it started. You know, we knew they were toys. We knew that they they seemed a little lost because they were kind of adult toys,、um, and then the club came as like a play on a lot of the. Projects that we were seeing in the space, everything is like you know mutant Shiba club, such and such club,、um, and so we thought, well, what if the club could mean a lot of things,、um, and we tied it to clubbing, rave culture, which is something that all three of us have been、uh, you know a big part of for for two decades, and so it just became obvious these these toys, these creatures, these bear koalas. Um, are party animals, and we wanted to attach utility to them, which. You know, which were a part of the bigger music ecosphere that we saw growing in the Web three space. Amazing, and so I'm just going to tell Nabi, you got your answer. It's degenerate bear koala Sesame Street <laughs> toys. <laughs> That's amazing. 
I love that. Um, and you you mentioned the utility tied to it. So, what sort of benefits do you think the community gains from holding a lost club toy? And how do you plan on activating um, these people? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, maybe it's a, it's 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 probably a, a loaded question because when we were originally going to launch, we were going to do the you know the traditional. 5,000 or 8,000 NFT drop where you build it on Twitter, build the hype on Discord, go towards your mint day. And then, you know, everyone, you know, everyone has their NFT. And then over time, it's revealed what, which, which particular toy that they get. And then you would see this, this toy would be attributed to a club in London, which would give you access to that club. Um, this toy would be would be attributed to a DJ and would give you access to that DJ. You get to go to his or her shows, um, master classes, all of that good stuff. So you know they were essentially utility tokens or membership tokens, if you will. Um, now we kind of took a step back from that because one, the markets crashed, and that whole hype mechanism of building NFT projects for the drop kind of faded away. Maybe it'll come back in a different version. Uh, in the future. And then the thing that was important to us that we realized was, well, the community we really want to build for, which are ravers, clubbers, people who are really into those scenes, they are not on Twitter. They are not on Discord. And so it would be, we, we wanted these to be in the hands of people who would really use them, people who are going to these spaces whether they're in yeah. Berlin, London, Ibiza, et cetera. And, it, and, it, and, and I think the old version of the NFT drop meant that actually they'd end up in the hand of gamblers, um, degenerates mm-hmm. in another version, right? Um, people holding it in order to sell later to make a lot of money. And that wasn't the way we wanted to kind of contribute to the, to the electronic music community. And so we took a step back, um, you know, very graciously got into an accelerator with Brink, uh, who's in Hong Kong and really gave us the scaffolding to kind of turn this into a long-term business model. And so now our approach is actually, we're not going to talk about the NFT drop right now. Right now we're building a platform and the platform essentially is uh, basically being that connective tissue between online engagement and offline experience. Um, so, you know, when you go, you know, to be in any thriving Web3 community now, you need to go buy Ethereum, you need to, you need to go on OpenSea, you need your MetaMask, you need your exchange, you need your token proof. There's all, you know, four or five different tools and, which are all kind of, you know, spread out. And it takes, you know, something like three hours for, for someone to onboard into the space on average. Mm-hmm. And so we wanted to kind of take away all of that friction and create something for the web two audience, which is the it's the majority of electronic music audience, and onboard them onto a platform where they are joining these communities, um, getting to discover the communities, engaging with the communities, and then the communities are rewarding them with um, you know whether it's tickets, door list, get to skip the queue. Um, and all of that is distributed through QR codes on the platform, which are dynamic NFTs. And the idea behind that is we can track all of this engagement online and offline. And then later down the road, and this might be like a six month journey, it might be a nine month journey, it might be a one year journey. Then we can see, OK, who are the people who are really engaging the, the evangelists for these communities? who up till now have been operating in a web two way. And then we can take those evangelists and say, you know what, we love what you're doing. We love what you've been doing for the community. You've really given it a voice and you're really engaging. Now we'd like to give you a toy, you know, and that toy is going to be attached to that particular community. Say it's a a, a club in Berlin or a club in London or a particular DJ or whatnot. Um, and those toys are going to give the utility that we had in, that we had envisioned in the very beginning. You know, it's going to give you access to those DJ shows. It's going to give you access to that nightclub, um, and it's going to be tracked in kind of a reward system. You know, similar to uh, you know the Star Alliance, where you get your points for traveling on different airlines. 
Um, and the more you engage, the more you're rewarded. And so you have this kind of leveling up engagement. And so say you engage, you know, you have your token for the club in Ibiza and the summer you go to every single night uh, to that club uh, and you've reached whatever the level 10, so to speak. It's like by the time you've reached level 10, it's like, okay, you really have become a true evangelist and ambassador for that place. So, you know, it, it, it makes sense that you, every time you want to come to the space, it's for free. You can bring friends and put them on the guest list and you get special access um, and special priorities. Um, and then the, 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 the silver lining of the Web3 journey is that we're then going to put those evangelists into a DAO. Um, and that DAO can decide on the future of the intellectual property because we're going to do a version of Creative Commons Zero so that those people in the DAO can choose to build the toys into different spaces, into music spaces, into, you know, the festivals, you know, that we want to put on, the parties we want to put on, uh, really be part of the foundation of, you know, the founding members um, and choose where, where the toys go on from there. If they want to start an offshoot, which is a tennis club, then we can make the toys play tennis. Uh, you want to start an offshoot of, you know, a supper club, you know, where people get together and they cook for each other. You can do an offshoot for that. And so really the toys are starting with electronic music, you know, the, the, the toys are kind of like building out an ecosphere in the music space to then build into other spaces from there. Oh, Daniel, I think a lot of what... So it's a very... No, that, that, that makes complete sense. And I feel like a lot of my friends would like to earn based on their degeneracy. So I think there's a lot, there's something definitely here. And I, I know a lot of conversations you and I have had offline have been about this. We need to find a middle ground for Web 2.5, kind of closer to Web 2, but taking in some aspects of Web 3. And I do think that that's the more practical route going forward. I wanted to yeah. touch on the platform you're building because I know the future of the Lost Club Toys, you have the NFTs, you have the platform, you have the DAO, you have all the directions each NFT in itself can go with the IP. But in two to three years, in your like blue sky scenario, because I know right now you're in, um, you're completing the, the beta build out of your application. And that's kind of actually why we're here because it's something Lost Club Toys and Nest are working on together. Um, in two to three years, this platform itself, what would you kind of envision it looking like? Like, what would you consider yeah. a success? Yeah, um, I really, I, I mean, so we've taken a very community first approach, really building for these club communities, trying to teach them how to be a community outside of the walls of the club. Um, you know, people in party communities, they, they work together, they become best friends, they become lovers, they travel together, they chill together, they go shopping together, you know, it's not just about going to see DJs. Um, and so for us, it's kind of like, we want, we, we want the app to be a space of discovery, discovering the communities that obviously you, you know, you engage in, but discovering communities outside of your comfort zone. Um, a pro social app where you are connecting with people you might not have connected with and those connections online lead to real IRL engagement you know so for example like things like you know Instagram uh, Twitter uh, Reddit you know they, they, they all have their positives and they are, they do create virtual uh, engagement, but none of that virtual engagement really leads to, none of that virtual social engagement really leads to people meeting in the real space. And so we kind of want the platform to be the connective tissue between online and offline for any community. Um, and, and building your, building up your, you know, your digital profile through your Lost Club toy avatar, which we uh, are considering being soul bound. And, you know, just like, you know, my body is soul bound, I can't get rid of my body, but I can, I can buy things like this sweater. I can change my hair color. I can get my nails done. I can buy a shirt, you know, and all of those can have 
attributes and utility that pass off to different things. So it's like your toy could have a hat which is tied to a nightclub in Spain. Um, you know, it gets you special special privileges and access to that nightclub and that and that particular community. But I could also have you know a tennis racket that you know gives me special privileges to uh, a tennis club in Singapore, for example, or or or, or sister clubs that are tennis clubs around the world. Um, and so we we want this to be the community space, really between offline and online in the Web three world, um, for any interest group, for any interest group that you can think of. It's amazing. And then the toy itself represents the different things that you decide to participate in. Exactly. And then the toy itself represents your participation in those specific groups. And just like you have a wardrobe, you know, you can change your toy, you can sell pieces of your wardrobe. This, the, the, uh, the avatar itself is soul bound to you. So you can't sell that unless you sell your wallet. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then obviously your avatar changes over time because we change over time, we get older. Um, and we want to use AI to reflect those changes. So it's not, it's not just, it's, it's going to be a dynamic NFT, which evolves over time. Um, and, you know, people like to wear their certain badges, wear their accoutrements to show I'm part of this club, I'm part of that club, I'm part of that club. You know, it's not about being just in one singular club. You know, as we know, as um, kids growing up in Singapore, Aman, like you're constantly mixing between different communities and social circles, right? Um, it, it's yes, and so that's really where the toy, where I, I kind of envision the three five year journey. Amazing, and uh, more of a question on the industry. So, uh, your project is like the basis of your project is focused obviously on music. Uh, why do you think now is the right time to shift into Web three for the music industry? Yeah, I think that's such a good question. Um, one, the, one, the music um, space, the, the, those fans, those audience members are constantly shifting, shifting between online and offline already. You know, you listen to your musicians on Spotify and SoundCloud, you buy tickets on Ticketmaster, you go to the events or you go to the clubs. Um, for musicians, particularly when streaming came out, it, it took away a lot of their revenue the pool of their revenue. And so um, the Spotify's of the world have actually not been a great, have not done a great service into helping and sustain um, particularly up and coming artists. You know, there's only mm -hmm. a fraction of artists on Spotify who really make money. And so I think there's, but the one thing that artists have that no platform can steal from them is their fan base. And so more and more, musicians, music labels are looking to monetize that fan base. And I think Web3 and blockchain um, is an amazing tool for them to be able to do that. Uh, no one's really cracked it right now, you know, and now you see Spotify is slowly getting into the space. I was going to ask you um, about that, actually, because <laughs> I'm curious of what you honestly think about it, since I know they're doing just token gated playlists right now, but do you think it kind of opens the door door up for like token gated albums only slash being able to use um, songs in your own playlist only if you hold a certain token? Like, do you think they're going to do this right? Or I don't know. I think it's a, it's, it's an interesting one when a big company like Spotify pushes into this space. Yeah, I, I think you said you, you said the right um, you hit the you hit, you hit the point on the head, which is a big company. Um, the Web3 space moves so quickly, everyone is pivoting, you know, on a weekly, daily basis sometimes. Mm -hmm. And for these big companies, these huge corporations, it's very difficult for them to adjust. And, you know, I mean, just ugh, I, this is a different example. I mean, t Twitter, right? Um, Elon Musk is trying to adjust day after day after day after day and, and, and nothing is really quite sticking. Um, with Spotify, I'm sure they've had a lot of thinking. Uh, they've, they've consulted a lot of very smart people. The Swedish uh, tech industry is, you know, punches above its weight. Um, but at the same time, one of the reasons why anyone got onto Spotify was it was a quick, whatever it was, seven, eight, 
15 euro fee and then I get access to everything. And so if they're now going to take away access to certain things and, and start putting a, a premium on those, um, it's, 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 it's dissolving, it's, it's, it's ticking away at its business model. So yeah. we'll see how many people stay or whether the opportunity is for a Web3 player to come in. Um, I really like public pressure. I don't know if you've seen those guys. They're doing yeah. really interesting stuff. And I think their ambition is to be like the Apple music of the Web3 world. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think Web3, if anything, is an opportunity for underground players to compete with the big players. So I wouldn't say Spotify definitely has it in the bag. Shots fired, Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> Did, didn't come from me. <laughs> I think we have one more question from you, Gly, so I'll, I'll give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are you hoping to achieve this year, Daniel? Like, how, how do you think your project contributes to the Web3 ecosystem? So we're hoping to, you know, get to launch. Um, we did a really good job last year of, you know, in our development phase, we did a really good job year, job of getting a lot of DJs and artists on board, a lot of clubs on board. And then, you know, the, the FTX debacle happened. And suddenly everyone from The Economist to The Financial Times to The New York Times were, were running headlines. Is this the end of crypto? Is this the end of NFTs? Um, and so it scared a lot of people who were interested to get in. It scared a lot of them off. Um, and so I hope that the space can continue to grow and reclaim its losses uh, over, the next, over the next year. Um, and I hope that we can come in at the right time and really service uh, the communities that we have lined up, these clubbing communities, and make a great product for them. Uh, really teach them the power of being a community. I think that's what the really interesting thing is. Like everyone talks about community in, in the space, but no one really knows what that means. I always think of, I, I, I always think of the Reddit GameStop uh, phenomenon, right? Where, uh, where, the, where, where a Reddit group, which was doing Wall Street bets, kind of got together as a community and really challenged Wall Street in a big way. Um, that's the power of community, right? It can have amazing, huge, uh, uh, it can create waves basically. And so I think we, we're, uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of education that, that any founder in Web 2.5 or Web 3 has to do um, to, with our partners, with the community members, with the people who are onboarding. Uh, but I think that that education, you know, curve is getting less and less steep. Um, particularly young people who heard so many things about NFTs and, and crypto over the last five years, you know, they're getting, you know, they're getting disposable income now, they're getting more interested, they're understanding self-governance, understanding mm -hmm. what a DAO yeah. is, understanding how communities can operate virtually that has real world ramifications. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I, I hope that we can have the right mix of creating an amazing quote unquote web to uh, solve a web to product that solves a web to problem backed by some web three technology um, with the right amount of education to then build and build and build, you know, further down the line into web three. No, that, that, that makes a lot of sense, Daniel. And to be honest, actually what you just said right there about, um, about young people, like the educational requirement is high, I think, for the traditional people in the professional workspace. But for young people, it's not as much because a lot of them might have grown up hearing all of these things. Like, I, I remember the first, within the first month and a half of having a bank account, my first bank account, I bought crypto. So I like, which, so that's why to me, it doesn't seem too crazy to learn some of these things. But when I talk to my dad about it, it takes him reading three books to even try to understand it. And so yeah. I think, no, you definitely hit the, the nail on the, on the top of the head there. I don't know if that's the correct phase, but anyways, <laughs> Daniel, please, thank you so much for being here. I think I've always been really excited about your project, both the imagery I loved, the idea I loved. I know we've talked about it in our many random meetups around the world last year. Um, 
but please go ahead and tell um, the people listening where they can find you guys on social media, your Twitter, Instagram, whatever you like. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's been a great chat and uh, I look forward to seeing you in person in Singapore, I hope, uh, pretty soon. Uh, but find us on www.lostclubtoys.com. Uh, there's, uh, uh, there's an email thing at the bottom, which you can put your email in and you'll be put into our, 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 our waiting room as we launch the product. So, so you know when we launch. And you can find us mostly on Instagram, lostclubtoys.com. Uh, sorry, Lost Club Toys. Um, we, as, as I mentioned, we, we, we stayed away from the Twitter degen side of it all. Mm. You know, we have a Twitter and, and we will update it, but we're not heavily engaging with the Twitter world because it's just not really our space. Amazing. So I will make sure to put all the links below in the description, but thank you everybody for listening to the third episode of the hatched podcast please make sure to like comment and subscribe leave us any feedback of guests you want us to have things you want us to talk about um thank you daniel so much for taking the time and we'll we'll see you guys really soon